Have you ever heard about the switch function in Microsoft Access? Hi, I'm Philip from CodeCabinet.com. Today I would like to make a quick video about a function I recently discovered in Microsoft Access. And recently discovered does not mean it is a new function, but it's a function that has gone for quite some time under my radar and I've got the impression that um, many of you haven't noticed this function either. So I think it's a good idea to cover that in this video. Well, for a bit of background, let's start somewhere else. Years ago, when I first saw and used the case statement in Microsoft SQL Server SQL, I was amazed how powerful that is to uh, just use multiple expressions inside your SQL to output uh, one value per record. And it is very readable and very well structured. And I always thought I would like to have the same in Microsoft Access, but we, well, because I did not know, I had to use multiple neft, nested um, inline if or immediate if, i if um, function calls in Access to get the same result. And that becomes pretty unreadable if you got lots of nested. Um, nested conditions, nested expressions and I just discovered the switch function in Access that allows you to get the same results but much more readably structured. Well, um, I think we can best understand what I'm talking about while looking at the code. So let's go. This is a SQL Server query that uses the case statement to segment customers into uh, different customer segments depending on the sum of their order value. And let's look at it very quickly because it's very easy to understand and it's very readable. That are the main advantages. The case statement is beginning here and Obviously, it's ending here with the end keyword. And now I just evaluate several expressions. When sum of order value is less than 20, then I return this expression, which is a simple constant string. It's a small customer. When sum of order values between 20 and 70, it's a medium customer. And when sum of order values more than 70, it's a big customer. And something that you should always keep in mind, else if there is another value and particularly that would um, concern null values, then I output an undefined. If I would leave that out, it would simply output null. That might be valid as well and might be an, um, a sufficient indicator that there that the customer segment cannot be determined, but maybe if you process the result of that function and the null value will cause an error then, then you should definitely um, output a defined value instead of null. So always keep the null values in mind. With this query, I don't need to handle null because I know that uh, the underlying query is not going to return null for uh, the sum of order value. It's impossible. So I can just remove the else part here. Well, as I said, this is a SQL Server query. So I cannot run it in Access. And at this time, I cannot run it in SQL Server because I don't have the table or query in SQL Server. So you just I have to take my word for it that it does work the way I described. But what I'm going to do now is to migrate this query to Access. And the first idea you probably have when um, having the need to convert such type of query to Access 
or to, to write such kind of query in access is to use the immediate if function, the if function. And I just copy that to a new file. Just let me switch the language to SQL. And now I'm going to use the immediate if function that is available in access to rewrite this query. And the immediate if function would just um, evaluate one expression, then it would output this the next argument if that value is true and then it would output another value if it's not true so this would be a single immediate if call in access but we got multiple expressions that we want to evaluate and the immediate if function only allows to evaluate one expression and then output a value if it's true or another value if the expression it was not true. So I can rewrite this query using immediate if, but I would have to use several nested immediate ifs. So, okay, let's do that. And I'm going to format that as readable as possible. Now, instead of just outputting a constant value for the false part of the immediate if, I put in another immediate if and put the next expression in here. And now this would result in uh, that being the medium customer. And finally, I would use a third immediate if to test for the big customer. And that's, that would look this way. And I just can omit the false part and then it would also output a null value if that is if none of the uh, expressions evaluate to true. But that cannot happen here. So I can just leave this out and close the immediate if call. And I have to close the parent immediate if calls that are above. And now I'm ending up with this and the end statement is not required because that would be just used for the case expression SQL Server. So I end up with this query. And let's quickly check if it works. I've got an access database here and I just create a query. I do not need to add any table because I've got the full SQL here already. You see the access SQL editor just mangles my SQL. That is the reason why I hardly use it, but I'll talk about that in more depth in another video. So let's just run this. And we got a syntax error here. And you see it's already hard to see. There is a comma missing there. Okay, let's run it again. And this is indeed the expected result. So this would be the solution to the particular task at hand. But um, even if you look at the query here, it is, and just add the missing comma, it is a bit uh, harder to read. Just let's switch back to the case statement. That is much clearer. It is very easy to, to process that in your brain, what's happening here. This is much more complicated with the nested immediate if or inline if functions here. So is there a better way? Yes, there is a better way. And I have to admit, I only very, very recently found out about the switch function in access. And that is indeed a much better way to write that. Let's go back to the original query with the case statement grab that and let's look at it with the switch function. So we use the switch function to do exactly the same as before. And the switch function is actually very, very similar to the case expression. I can write um, 
an expression here and then I would separate that because the next one is an argument to the function as well. Then I would output this value. So if this evaluates to true, this is going to be the output. And then I can add another expression here. And if this evaluates to true, then I would output that value. Very, very much like the case statement of SQL Server. And finally, if this evaluates to true, then I output the big customer segment here. And I need to close the, the brackets here for the function call and I remove the end statement. And now I just copy this to access once once again i just switch back to the sql view of our existing query and paste the code in here and run the query and you see the results are exactly the same so this is a much cleaner way to write a case like expression in access because you now got the the same um, structure like in the original case with the expressions neatly lined up here and no nesting. That is very, very nice. Now I want to extend this a little bit to, to show you a bit of a pitfall with uh, the switch function. I can just copy that here and say I add another expression. I can um, concatenate expressions with and and or. So I can use basically any complexity of expressions in here. So I said average of order value is bigger than 20. And now I introduce a new segment here. It's the excellent customer. And let's try to run this. Switch back to SQL, paste it in there and run it. And I'm not sure if you notice it, but the results have not changed. But they should have. Well, they should have if I had not made an error in my expression. And that is actually what I want to draw your attention to because this is a logical error. Now we, we evaluate this expression, we evaluate that expression and we evaluate that expression. And now this evaluates to true and will sort every customer into the big customer segment and this expression here will never be evaluated because this part is already matched by this expression. So all the customers that match the first part of that, this expression will already be caught by this one. So this does not work as expected. And that is something you always need to take into account if you want to extend your expression like this, then you have to add a matching expression in here and say you want only the customers with average order value of um, less or equal 20 in that segment. And once again, we just copy this to the access query delete the old stuff, paste it in there and run it. And now you see we've got an excellent customer here and we got another excellent customer down here. So now it works as expected and it is a pretty readable um, way to write your queries. And I think it's much, much better than using the much more commonly known immediate if or inline if. So, 
that's all what I wanted to show today. But um, I think it's definitely worth to keep the switch function in the back of your mind because it's very, very useful if you need to write these type of expressions in SQL. So that's it already. Very simple, yet very powerful. And there is not much I can say about the switch function itself, but I would like to remark on my example because it is a bit leaking, like most examples that you need to construct for a video. It is valid and it is um, working, obviously, but if you encounter the same situation in a real world scenario where you want to group customers in different segments or similar operations, then you should always carefully think if it's not a better idea to create a new table with the customer segments and their threshold values and then join this, query, this table in your query and um, use the and compare the threshold values with the actual value in either the join expression or the where condition to get the value. That is much more versatile because you can then just go in and type new threshold values into the table to change that and you do not need to go back to the query and change the SQL source code. But, well, if you just need a quick segregation like I did that in, in the video, then using the switch function is fine. And there are lots of other uh, situations where you probably want just a quick solution in a query and then is, uh, it is very, very handy to use the switch function to write down that expression is very readable. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please subscribe and like the video. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye bye.